Hello friends, welcome to my course on Pusto Query Language, uh, also referred to as KQL. Uh, this is a query which is supported from an Azure environment, so it is, I mean the prerequisites for this is to have some awareness of Azure platform and some navigational access to the Azure platform will be much more helpful. So what exactly is Pusto Query Language and why it is important in this context? Uh, I mean specifically in the context of cloud, this is the language of cloud, if you want to perform analytics, if you want to understand what is the data flow, how is the data flowing, what information and what insights, if you want to some draw some insights, if you want to draw some graphical information from the data which is very raw and naive, so you have to use push to query language, it is the language of cloud for understanding the logs, generated, understanding the various sources of information which it generates. So a push to query language is a read-only request to process data and return results. The request is stated in plain text using a data flow model designed to make the syntax easy to read, author and automates. So the query uses schema entities. So what is a schema? Schema is nothing but is that arrangement of data in a table or a database. The, the how it arranges the data that's called a schema. And it is organized in a hierarchy similar to SQL's database and tables and columns. This is the hierarchy. So the hierarchy which it carries is similar to that of SQL databases which we have worked on previously. The query consists of sequence of query statements delimited by semicolon with at least one statement being a tabular expression statement which is a statement that produces data arranged in a table like mash of columns and rows. So the query to the queries tabular expression statement produces the result of the pursuit. Uh, this is the information about the ETL and I have, let me make you aware that I have taken this data from Microsoft. If you want to f understand further and you want to do a deep dive, however, I will be giving you the much insightful demos of each and every concept which it offers. So this is the link from where I have got the data. Uh, this is just an introductory data which I have got from here and otherwise I will be giving you a full demo of each and every construct, I mean KQL construct by which we can understand the uh, raw data, near data much uh, depth. So the query consists of sequence of query statements which are delimited by this and uh, I think they have repeated the same stuff over here. Mm. So this is uh, some, uh, uh, this is the concept of KQL. So where exactly KQL is used? So one of the important is this called as Azure Log Analytics. If you know what is Log Analytics in the context of Azure is nothing but it's the repository, it's the data storage. Whatever logs are generated, we can create a log analytics workspace there. So the log analytics workspace which is created uh, for the purpose of monitoring for both cloud and on-premise solution. How on-premise solution, on-premise solution which are connected with Azure Cloud. So basically this is in context of Azure Cloud. Second thing where we can use KQL is Azure Application Insights. Application Insights means nothing but the web application which we have deployed using uh, Azure Cloud. that will be uh, will get inside like how many hits are there from where the hits have been and uh, from where the website is getting access in the world so that all the information can we can use on windows defender atp is advanced threat protection this is nothing but it's endpoint detection and uh, endpoint detection and response tool uh, this is a tool uh, or kind of a platform which we install on our endpoints and to get uh, continuous threat intel to the central cloud server okay where, where we have this advanced ATP it's also it also generates logs which we, on which we can perform analysis so how we'll perform the analysis we'll perform the analysis using this KQL constructor then we know about Azure Secret Center which is a multi-cloud uh, hybrid cloud basically multi-cloud or hybrid cloud threat protection across your whole cloud scenario it will give you the insights and give you the recommendations so in general it will be ingesting uh, the data based on the analytics agent which it has been deployed on the machines which are connected to Azure Security Center in turn. And those insights we can perform analytics and which will be giving us details like what what exactly is happening and how you can further use that data. So we will understand how that will be happening that will happen eventually. So uh, as we know that KQL is a, is a hands on practice thing, the more you practice more you get. So, uh, and I told that these are the major areas where it is uh, being used like application insights and different ATP. So these are the uh, links or these are the practice playgrounds, you can call it as playgrounds uh, where you can uh, go and practice your hands on. 
you, you can you can go around and play uh, with queries which you can answer for log analytics if you want you can have this link you can go and uh, open this link so it will be eventually as this is a log analytics uh, a query area we can perform quick you can write quick queries in this area and uh, these are the default tables i'll be coming back to this again in a while so that link is for log analytics, uh, analysis application inside is there and then uh, defined rate we have this area so you can go and practice around with they have default data sets with them you can go and write the queries there and so this is uh, an introductory data about the KQL. So let's go with the demo thing and uh, platform acquaintance so this is the very first one that is log analytics area here we can write our query these are the uh, query areas you can hide it these are the schemas okay these are the default schema AD assessment, active data and change tracking container insights. If you have deployed in containers, infrastructure insights, network monitoring, security, security center fee. These are the default schemas which are given to you. You can have your own schemas also or the tables. Okay. So mostly we'll be focusing around this log management schema. Okay, this is the one. These are the default tables. So if you want to can address so this is for instance this is app center error. This is one table which it has annotation as a column. So consider in the context of SQL, if you can try to map it out, uh, this is a table name and these are the various columns which it will have. So T stands for T is a text. So let me if it is prefixed with T, then it's a text column. Okay. If it is uh, prefixed with a hash, hash means. Hash means a numeric column. Okay. It's a numeric column, and if it is uh, followed by some this kind of a clock icon, clock icon, then it's a date time stamp. Date time stamp. Okay. And these are the generic information about the uh, various types of columns which we could have in, in a table. So if you uh, you know if you want to understand, uh, for instance, if we take any event, okay, event log. So if you want to uh, run this table like the event, if we run this, you know, see it has intelligence also with it, uh, which in which it will highlight. So if I click this, okay, there's just some other table came up in here. Event, if you write event, and we just click it like this. So it will give a power problem, but I just want to run it. Uh, very name so i what i did to run i did uh, uh, press uh, shift enter to run it very frequently otherwise you can use this run also but as we see there's no data in this table or like uh, you know, this is the way this place where you can select the timestamp of the last 30 minutes or 4 hours 12 hours 24 hours 48 hours etc like that uh, uh, let me move to some other table like let's see heartbeat okay if i double click here then also it will come make sure you are removing and placing the cursor correctly otherwise it will not be very effectively working out again okay. so let's see that play image let me check heartbeat and let me run this uh, there's no heartbeat data i think but it, it so yeah one more important thing heartbeat i am not giving any where clause and i'm not filtering it anyway so it might take time the time uh, which it taking depends upon multiple factors like the time range which is by default selected here and uh, if it is like more it will be taken because it has a huge data we are just uh, getting the data from a uh, table directly and it has a huge call number of columns huge number of data etc these are the various columns these are the various columns which are there and as I indicated t is text and p is maybe mm -hmm. boolean value like true or false hash is basically numeric value and t uh, is a timer time generated timestamp okay so let me walk you through so this is the uh, stuff we around like we have just simply started playing around the stuff and will uh, eventually get more insight uh, so there is a default is a query explorer is also there which had uh, which it has a saved query for instance if you see events related or heartbeat related and IP investigation if you want to do performance related is there so if you want to see available memory this will give if you double click it will give us a query directly see this gave us a query if you want to know uh, available memory and so if you want, if you run this out we'll get uh, there's no data as of now maybe so let's uh, these are the default ways so computer available these are 
the here also the, the if you come to this playground you will get default here you can see this is a query and uh, availability rate calculate the availability rate each com connected computer this is the availability rate okay so it fetches data from heartbeat so it is there by default okay so let's so this is the stuff around uh, we just started and uh, in coming lectures we'll uh, deal with uh, more other constructs of the KQL3 thanks